like you're putting this on TV. You want somebody to watch. You brought me in for a reason. You 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 owe me a thank you. If you go back and watch the show, Raquel was a complete backstabber to me. When we squared up, I was out of eye with him in my mind. You know what I mean? We can fight for the women's BMF inaugural belt if she'd like. Just need a wider lens to get the blue shoes. I mean, when he brings out the blue shoes, we got to see him. What do you have to tell all the doubters and the haters who didn't believe you while you were doing it? Oh, man, I wouldn't tell those guys anything. I, I, I appreciate those guys. I mean, I, they, those were the ones that I was speaking to. But I will tell you, when tonight is over, and this is a break, I realize I'm punching my own ticket here, but I have beaten four Hall of Famers. Nobody else has ever beaten four Hall of Famers. When tonight's over, I will have beaten four guys that are inducted. I only say that because it's a little weird that I'm in the fight wing <laughs> when I should be in the real. They're, they're inducting two guys that I smoked. and the, It's a weird thing, in all fairness. Sorry about that, champ. Listen, I'm seeing you here, and you're I mean, just... I mean, they, they brought me out as though I should be, oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Like, you're putting this on TV. You want somebody to watch. You brought me in for a reason. You you, you owe me a thank you. It's not th it's not thank you for me. It's your welcome. August is international. September is the sphere card. And so the next available was October, and sounds good to me. Juliana, the likely opponent? Yeah, you know, um, I like the idea of Kayla and her hype and being, being able to shut down that train. But at the end of the day, I'm also the person. I've been in the UFC since 2013. Uh, you know, I've worked from the ground up. I've never had anything handed to me. So I hate when athletes get to come in and just because of their name or whatever their resume may look like prior to UFC um, and they just right away jump the line. Like, I don't agree in that. Um, and so I feel like there's a lot of women who have been in my position as well. So, you know, I'm, I'm a champion. I'll fight whoever. But at the end of the day, like, Juliana's a fight that I've been waiting for since 2013. Um, and that's the one that we have in sight. All right. Well, thanks, Rocky. Appreciate you and look forward to maybe seeing you in October. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, one thing, as a Canadian channel, I want to issue an apology on behalf of our country for your fight against Lyoto. On behalf of the judges in Canada that night, we apologize. <laughs> Como canadense, ele gostaria de pedir desculpas para você em nome do Canadá pela tua luta contra o Lioto por conta dos juízes. O que, é que você tem para falar? É, foi uma, uma, foi bem conturbada a decisão, mas eu quero dizer que eu amo o Canadá. Eu acho que o Canadá é um dos países que eu mais tenho fã no mundo, então eu amo o Canadá. No translation needed for that. Listen, it was uh, it was a very um, controversial decision, uh, but I wouldn't say like I love Canada is one of the countries that I have the most fans in the world. So I love Canada. It looks like we've got almost like a three-person race. Is yourself, you got Raquel, and you got Juliana. Not really seeing anybody. Macy Chase on gets a win on Saturday. Like that's a possibility. But is that kind of who you'd be looking at? I don't care. I literally will fight any of them. I'll fight some of them on the same night. So. You're hungry to fight. You want to get back in there. Yeah, I'm ready. It's time. I've been I've been eating some donuts. I've been, you know, it's time to get back in shape and, and get back in the in the cage. I'm ready. Now, South Florida is not that big, and I know Amanda Nunes was supposed to be walking the red carpet, but I haven't seen her tonight. Um, have you heard any rumblings about her wanting to come back? I have. Well, I heard you showed me the video after my fight, and it's really, like, not in my nature to call out somebody who's retired, but... Uh, if she wants to have my name in her mouth, then I'll let her know that I willingly accept. And we don't have to fight for a title, and we don't have to fight for a belt. We can fight for the women's BMF inaugural belt if she'd like. But I'm here, I'm ready, and my arms are wide open. Of any fighter that I've ever watched, I'm most impressed with your career, given that you fought at 55, 45, and 35, and won the championship at 55 against guys that were just so much bigger than you. Was that ever a task that you found daunting, fighting guys that were that much bigger than you at the time? You know, I, I never thought of it. You know, I, 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 when I looked him in the eyes, we were, well, when we squared up, I was out of eye with him in my mind. You know what I mean? And, uh, I mean, really, when I got to UFC, that was the lightest division. So I really had no choice. But, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I still think... I still, you know, I still think I could have competed at 55 when I went down. Raquel Pennington, she's somebody who you lived with for the Ultimate Fighter. We're on the same team as, as her. But it didn't seem like you get along all that well on the show. And Raquel just told me, I guess, a couple minutes ago that she's been wanting to fight you since 2013. Is the feeling mutual? Absolutely. If you go back and watch the show, Raquel was a complete backstabber to me. She would come in and ask me how I was feeling. And, you know, because we're on the same team, I would tell her how I was feeling. And then she'd go down to the other team and she'd tell them everything that I just got done saying. And, like, I thought that she had my back. I thought that she was somebody that could be a friend of mine, but she choose, or pro proved herself to be completely untrustworthy and like not loyal at all. And if anybody knows me, I'm loyal to the soil. And if I got your back, I got your back. And so I felt completely betrayed by her. And, uh, you know, she was just very negative and uh, lazy on the show. And, and she just made my life more difficult. And she was not a friend to me by any means. I mean, I gave this girl a makeover. I dressed her up in my dresses. I put my high heels on her. I gave her a makeover. 
she should be saying thank you to me and saying, wow, you made me look more beautiful than I ever have in my entire life. But instead, she's like, I want to fight you. So I'm like, okay, let's do it. Like, I would love to. I feel like the opposite is going to be true for the fight. You're going to try to make her look not as beautiful as she's ever looked in her entire life when you guys tangle in the octagon. Probably going to give her some natural makeup there. Yeah, it might be the color purple. You never know. Yeah. Are you, are you proud of Thor for following in your footsteps? Muito, realmente. Eu fico muito feliz de ver o meu filho treinando, lutando. Você que tem um filho, coloca o teu filho para treinar, porque vale muito a pena. I have to say, uh, I'm very proud of uh, me. It's kind of weird that he's talking about me. <laughs> but... Um, uh, it's great to be here, and uh, he's very proud for me following in his, in his footsteps. Are you more nervous watching him fight than when you were going to fight? Muito, realmente. As pessoas, muitas pessoas me perguntam se eu fico nervoso vendo meu filho lutar. E eu falo que só quem é pai e o filho luta vai poder saber, porque realmente antes fica, eu fico muito nervoso. He says, yeah, it's uh, very nerve-wracking. Uh, you only the people who have uh, kids that fight will know how nervous you feel. What's the closest that you came to coming back? Was there like a time where you were you almost came back? Oh uh, yeah, eight months after retirement, so I was back to American Top Team. It was the end of January 2023 uh, last year. Uh, but so I did like a pre-camp, four weeks of of hard training. I felt so great, and I decided to come back. But then my shoulder, I couldn't handle the pressure, and so it just cemented my decision. You know that I made the right decision uh, eight months before. You know, so yeah. Do you think? that you you can possibly challenge Demetrius Johnson's title defense number. And I think you can do it. What do you think? I'm too old, bro. <laughs> no, no, yeah, but something so special. Demetrius Johnson is a goat for me, you know. Uh, one of my dream fighters with him, you know. If I can choose someone to fight right now, today, it's him, you know. The guy, I, I respect him a lot, you know, what, what he did. But I think the, 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 the things change, you know. MMA change all the time, you know. And I, I think he, he not come back because he not can did that again, you know. We have a lot of good names in that division. Uh, fight today, fight is so much hard, you know. I don't want, I don't want to like a, take old guys thinking I'm, I'm say something wrong, but today you have internet, every you have cameras all the way. If you are good, you come to UFC, you know. That's what happened, you know. And uh, think time, times like today. It's so hard to keep the belt, you know, it's something very hard. Couple guys have two defense, no more like that, you know. And uh, I try to I try to keep my belt all, all the fight. And uh, something I like to say is, um, I don't think I'm the champion of the world. I, I try to be the champion of the world when the guys give me the date of the fight, you know. That's something I try to think about, you know. When I have the date, in that day, I try to be the champion of the world again, you know. Yeah, Andre Feely, he bought a house here in Las Vegas, and I think he's going to start eventually calling this home. Who was the realtor that helped him buy the house? If you, can I ask, if you don't mind me asking? <laughs> yes, Joseph Benavidez, now retired and decided that just playing pickleball wasn't really that stimulating for him. So it's pickleball now and helping athletes like make smart investments and good choices and also help finding their dream home. And it's something that he did while he was uh, fighting, and he was smart with his money and his investments and something he was really passionate about. And now I think he always wanted to give back to the sport because he was around it for so long. And I think he's found sort of his perfect thing of being able to help these guys make his own schedule still play pickleball all the time so yeah he's living the dream that joe b <laughs> well you can't have a big ufc event without megan olivi thank you for doing this you're the best Aaron. thank you well, what's your most memorable card that you call do you have one that stands out as being maybe your finest hour that, that you enjoyed the most that, that you thought you did the best at as well you know some nights you feel sharper than others i did feel sharp at ufc 300 but for me it's the championship moments it's when a first time athlete or a first-time fighter breaks through, becomes a champion for the first time. Jan Bohovic, Brandon Moreno, Glover Teixeira. Those are the special moments. I know a lot of people harken back to UFC 217 that night at Madison Square Garden when three belts changed hands. In totality, maybe we haven't had a more memorable night in the booth, me, Joe, and DC, but for me, it's just when the challenger becomes champion. Those are the most special nights on a mic for me. That's always a great opportunity to get a chance to speak with you ahead of these big events. Hall of Fame. It seems like I talk to you every year at the Hall of Fame, so it's always a pleasure for me, and I hope you enjoy it as well. Thanks so much for doing it. Always this. a pleasure, AB. We just need a wider lens to get the blue shoes. I mean, when he brings out the blue shoes, we got to see him, but always got time for you, my man. Thank, Thank you, dude. Thank you.